Okay, so we've talked a lot about different social media channels, and hopefully with this one we'll kind of start to wrap some of it up. So um, we've talked about textual ones. That's where we just left off when we discussed blogs and microblogging and things like that. Uh, but there's also, of course, photo sharing, right? Uh, and so and the line between photo and video keeps blurring because each of the platforms decides to add content to the other. Uh, like, for instance, Instagram will now let you do videos, right? Uh, but let's talk about Instagram. Instagram is a very popular photo sharing platform. Um, and I have an example here of kind of both uh, uh, owned and paid social media advertising that uh, Harley Davidson is doing. This is Harley Davidson Australia, right? And they have this ad when the ocean calls that shows a Harley Davidson about to ride out, right, on this. Interestingly enough, right, you know, a lot of Instagram is about photo sharing. This actually looks like it's a created piece of artwork. Uh, that also happens on Instagram as well, so it works out very well. And then if you look over at their owned media, right, it's various pictures of, of, of Harley Davidson motorcycles. Uh, and this one actually looks like it's a, an actual video. They have 30,000 followers, right, um, and 500 posts, so they're obviously fairly active on uh, this particular um, platform, right? Um, and of course, photo sharing works very well if you have something that has this very photo shareable, right? Like if it's very photogenic, things like Harley Davidson, Coca-Cola, iconic kind of styles of brands work well. Could work for some services, right? But you need to think carefully about when you're going to use them in that space, right? Um, video sharing. It, it kind of blew my mind a little bit when I went back to put together this slide and update it a little bit. YouTube has got to be one of the most advertising covered pages I've seen out there when I think about it, right? So obviously, if when you first open up YouTube, you have these banner ads that appear across the top. This one's for a new type of electric car called the Faraday Future Car, right? Um, and these kind of show up right across the top of the ad. But then you also have side ads. So you have the sidebar ads that appear as you're watching videos, right? Um, and then you have the in-video ads, right? That sometimes are banner ads that appear across the bottom. They're sometimes pre-roll ads that appear before the video. Just the number of different ways that a marketer can advertise on YouTube is fairly amazing. And one of the things that YouTube really had to think strongly about when doing this, Google in general, who owns YouTube, had to think about, was how do we make sure that the content is being shown next to something that is relevant to it? Uh, and they've done a very good job of kind of working on algorithms and things like that, they kind of understand what's in the content that's being displayed and the kind of ads that might want to be displayed next to them. Uh, you know, in this case, we have um, a Maroon 5 video that has art.com, right? You know, Maroon 5, potentially pop popular with college students, right? And art.com, maybe something that you can get art for, the, for your college area um, or maybe just out of college for that matter, right? Uh, to decorate your business or your office, right? Uh, but then, of course, besides the paid advertising you can do, you can also do things like um, uh, uh, own content, right? So you can create your own content. So in this case, we have Netflix has their own content about the new Lemony Snicket series of uh, TV show that they're doing on their on their um on the, on the Netflix website, right? And so they can show little featurettes and videos and own content works for video sharing works very well for things that have a lot of video based content. So something like Netflix makes absolutely perfect sense, right? Um, you, again, you need to think about like, is it an appropriate channel for my particular uh, firm? And what I would often suggest is if it's not an appropriate channel, don't put, a, don't put even a stub up there, right? It's better to have nothing at all than to have a um, Netflix profile, or sorry, a YouTube profile that has like content that's 10 years old and nothing updated on it, right? Of course, you can do audio sharing as well, and podcasts are a great example about this, and you can do both earned and paid advertising in audio sharing and podcasts. Um, this was a great example of a, um, an owned uh, 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 media kind of content. So there's a new podcast out called IT is Greater Than Sci-Fi, uh, and in it, it's sponsored by VMware, right, a technology company. And there, the basic premise is that they talk about how IT could fix plot holes in various sci-fi movies, right? 
really cool idea, gets people involved in kind of uh, the technology space, allows VMware an easy way to advertise its products and services to an audience that's probably very interested in them, right? I love this idea. I think it's a great example of how to really do owned media in podcasts, in the podcast space, when, in a way you wouldn't necessarily think about, right? It's not just a podcast about the coolest new VMware technology, right? It's about this interesting idea of combining IT and sci-fi. Of course, you could also pay for ads to go into other podcasts that people might be listening to. So for instance, VMware could have paid for an ad in a, um, in a sci-fi uh, podcast, right? Um, in, in a sci-fi science fiction podcast. Uh, where they were talking about stories about science fiction, right? Uh, but instead they chose to go with the own media technology. In fact, they also did advertising for this podcast because I heard it on some other podcasts that are a little techie oriented. So that's probably a reason why they did it. One of the nice things about podcasts um, is that in general, they're targetable. You kind of know the demographics very well as to who they're going out to. It's measurable. You know how many people have downloaded them. Uh, they're somewhat, they're very controllable. A lot of times the advertisers work with the podcast developers to actually get them to record uh, the podcast in specific ways or get the ads to be recorded in specific ways to fit them. Relatively inexpensive, inexpensive not geographically constrained. They go anywhere. And right now they are supported by ads. And you know, a lot of ads suffer from skipping, right? Where if you like, if you're watching an ad on TV, you skip over it nowadays because you're usually watching it on demand. It's a little more tricky. A lot of times people are listening to podcasts while walking around, carrying them, listening to them while they're doing something else. It's a little harder to skip. So as a result, advertising still kind of works in this space, interruption advertising to some extent. Um, and, and so I think this is an upcoming and new area. It's really kind of been exploding recently and we've seen a lot of development in podcasts. Social bookmarking. So social bookmarking uh, is this idea that I can say, hey, I found this really cool thing on the web. I wanna share it with other people. And then people can comment on it, they can vote on it, they can do different things along those lines, right? So there can be kind of earned media here where people see pieces of content that you've put out in other places and then they share it on something like Reddit, for instance. Um, but there can also be sponsored uh, uh, content too or advertising content as well. So for instance, datasciencecentral.com is sponsoring some content on the fundamental statistics theorem revisited, right? In this particular example. So you can do both owned and uh, paid for content. Now, um, social bookmarking is, is popular, always has been. Um, it's a little harder to actually inject directly in as a, in the conversation yourself as a uh, marketer, but it's something I think you should be monitoring to see what's kind of trending, what's becoming important, what, where are the discussions heading within social media. Finally, we have the last category, which is location-based social. All right, and this is social that's really tied to a particular physical location. Yelp is a great example of that, right? So here I pulled up the Raleigh Brewing Company, uh, did a search for them on Yelp. They're right next to Nelson Hall, not too far away. Um, and you can see kind of what how people are uh, leaving reviews. Of course, when it comes to location-based social, since it is location-based, it's, it's uh, very important for companies to have local outreach and local markets to really spend some time on here, making sure that they understand what's going on. And in the round, in this particular case, right, of course you can do, uh, you can monitor the conversations. Yelp also, if you own the location, gives you the ability to respond to co comments people have made, right? Uh, and then you can also do advertising, right? So you can do advertising against the searches that people are making in that particular space. Um, Another great location-based app is something called Foursquare, also called Swarm at times, uh, that they actually split at one point. They have Foursquare is essentially now the app that basically does, gives you reviews. It's kind of a competitor to Yelp. Swarm is a check-in app for users that allows them to check in at different locations. Uh, and you know, one of the nice things about Foursquare and Swarm is that they, from a manager's perspective, if I take control of my location there, I can actually get insights into when are people visiting me, who, you know, have the, has one of my regulars not been back in a while, right? Things like that. And it kind of provides me with insight that normally I would only get through something like a loyalty program or something like that, right? Uh, but here I can get it just by people using this third-party app and understanding what's going on in those spaces, right? Okay. Um, 
So that's all the different channels I want to talk about. I want to spend a little bit more time talking about how you use those channels and how you analyze that, and that will come up in the next video.